I'm Dwight from Good Sounds. This is the fifth instructional video in a multi-part series dealing with theatrical sound production. In this video, we're going to talk about how to EQ your channels in order to get the best and most natural sound that you can. In our last video, we set our gain structure, and that's very important. So if you haven't seen that video yet, please check it out. But now we're going to try to get the actors to sound as natural as possible, and that can be a little bit difficult. Many factors contribute to the final sound that you hear from the speakers. The quality of the microphones being used is certainly important. The quality of the speakers and the mixer play a vital role as well. And of course, the actor's voice is very important. But how you equalize each channel on your mixer can have a tremendous effect on the final results. Now, I do need to mention that it's not possible for me to give you all the instruction that you could ever need for EQing in less than five minutes. EQing is one of the most difficult aspects of mixing sound and can take years to master or at least become really good. And this video isn't going to address EQing to eliminate feedback. That's an entirely different animal that we can address in the future. But I can give you some helpful tips that can go a long way to helping you achieve more natural sound. Let's start by identifying a few critical frequency ranges that are very important in speech reproduction. The first range I'm going to address will deal with the frequencies from around 200 hertz to 450 hertz. Now these numbers aren't exact, but generally this range can be used to do at least two different things. Adding more of these frequencies can add some body and warmth to vocals and help them to sound nice and full. However, this range can also be responsible for making vocals sound muddy and unintelligible. More times than not, we find that cutting in this range drastically helps to clear up vocals and give a more natural sound. This is mainly because this range tends to be very strong in sound systems and builds up energy very quickly in a venue. Cutting these frequencies can do wonders for improving vocal clarity. Another range that is important in vocal reproduction will be the frequencies from around 3000 Hz to five or six thousand hertz. This range is important for speech intelligibility because it's where consonants are emphasized. This really helps to define the beginnings and endings of words and plays a major role in helping us understand what someone is saying. This is a range where you may need to boost a little bit if you're having difficulty hearing the separation of words. Now, there are many more things that we need to know about EQing. But this is a great place to start, and making some adjustments in these areas will definitely help. So now, let's look at how we're going to make these adjustments. First, you want to locate where your EQ adjustments will be made, and that will depend on whether you have a digital console or an analog console. If you have a digital console, you probably have at least a four-band parametric EQ for every channel. Hopefully, you will be able to access that function and know how to navigate and change parameters. If you have an analog console, your EQ knobs will most likely be directly above the fader strip and may or may not include what are called sweepable mids. This is a function that will allow you to set the frequency you wish to adjust in both the low mid and the high mid frequency range, and then another that will allow you to cut or boost the volumes of those frequencies. If not, then you probably just have one knobs for mids, and it's going to be a fixed frequency. And this can make it difficult to really adjust the frequency that you need to. You should also have a knob for lows and highs, and again, these are probably a fixed frequency as well. But for the purpose of this video, we're going to assume you're working with either a digital board or an analog board that has sweepable mids. Now, have someone with a microphone stand downstage and begin talking. First, set your gain structure like we talked about before. Listen for clarity and intelligibility of speech. If you're in the back of the auditorium, can you hear and understand the actor clearly? If you feel the sound is a little too thin or tinny, adjust your low mid frequency to around 300 and slowly begin turning up the attenuation knob for that low mid. If you feel the sound is a little too muddy, then slowly begin turning down the attenuation knob for that same frequency. 
If you start to hear some improvements with either of these steps, but aren't completely sure that the results are exactly what you want, leave the attenuation knob where it is and slowly begin to adjust the frequency knob in one direction or the other. It may just be that you haven't hit the exact frequency that you need. Either way, you should hear a noticeable difference in the sound when making those adjustments. Now, do the same thing with the high mids and turn the frequency knob to around 4 or 5K. Now make an adjustment with the attenuation knob to achieve the desired sound you want. Do you need more definition in the pronunciation of words? Then turn it up. Is it too, too bright or harsh sounding? Then turn it down. Again, you should hear a noticeable difference in the sound when making those adjustments. And like the low mids, if you start to hear improvements but aren't quite there yet, leave the attenuation knob where it is and adjust the frequency. If you're still not happy with the sound, it could have a lot to do with other factors, including the speakers and whether or not there's EQ affecting those. It could be the quality of the microphones that are being used or the placement of the microphones on the actor. However, these changes that can be made could be incredibly helpful in getting your actors to sound much more natural and allow your audience to enjoy the show. Join us for our next video when we will talk about wireless microphones and the role that they play in your show. You can always check us out on Facebook or at GoodSoundDesign.com. If you need some assistance in setting up your mixer or need to rent or purchase a mixer for your show or venue, please let us know. We carry most major brands. And as always, thanks for joining us here at Good Sounds. And remember, if it can't be heard, it can't be good.